Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now this is going to be a sort of updated version of a tutorial which I did for Serif's previous photo product, uh, Photo Plus, which I did back in 2015. And even then I think it was only a written tutorial. I don't think I ever made a video tutorial for it. Um, so hopefully this will sort of update it sufficiently enough for Affinity Photo. And it's about making a better black and white image. Now before I go anywhere I just want to make two copies of this. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing this to help demonstrate what it is I want to say. Um, so I'll duplicate this twice and what I'm going to do this top no, this middle one what I'll do is I'll hide the top one if you let me there we go hide um, so I'm just working on this first copy now if you wanted to make a black and white image Invariably what you would do is come to adjustments and click on black and white and then you get this control panel where you can control basically you're controlling the luminosity of the various colours that make up the image. So you can make the reds darker or lighter or the yellows darker or lighter and so on. And it's a sort of balancing act if you doing the whole image in one go because obviously there's more blue in the sky there's more green in the in my particular image in the background so if I bring the blues down to get a much darker moodier sky it may not be totally noticeable but you may be having some effect on the blues that may be in the lower part of the image same goes for if I lower the yellow, it is affecting the bottom half of the image. And the reds will also affect the bottom half of this image. And obviously the tower that's here. But if I want to, like this, there's a white plant here and a couple here. If I want to bring those back so they are white, you are, but you want to bring the reds down so you get this green to be much more contrasty, you are losing the battle a bit and trying to keep these plants white. And also, you're making this part here sort of very oddly whitey colour rather than a more green I know it's not green but you know a much darker green because this should really follow on from this pathway and be the similar sort of colour so it is a balancing act as to if you're doing global adjustments as to the best you can get for one area than you can for another so you know, and I'll just merge this into that one and then I will hide this layer yeah so like I said it's a balancing act between what you can get for the different areas so really this is what, where you need to sort of divide your image into areas so if I come to the brush tool here I'll just pick black as a colour. So you've got to decide with your particular image where are the areas that you want to sort of keep. <sighs> Come to I picked the wrong brush tool. Pick the selection brush. Here we go. So I'm only going to do this roughly. So this here, these two areas here are of a similar sort of colour so I can alter those separately. And obviously the sky is another area and 
and so basically I've got one, two, those two are three. I've got four areas in my particular image where I want to treat them differently. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just, in fact, I can now delete that altogether. Don't really need that. So this, right, that was the overall global image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now pick the selection brush, which is what I should have done before. And I'm going to select my first area. And seeing as the sky is the biggest area, I'm going to select this. I'm not going to use a fairly big brush for most of this, just to get most of it in one hit. That's probably a bit too much. I press Control and Z. There we go. So I've got the sky selected but not the tower because I want to set, keep that as a separate section and I'll just click refine and then I'm just going to give it a slight feathering of two or three pixels yeah that will do and then click apply and then I'm just going to press Ctrl and J. And then press Ctrl and D to get rid of the selection area. And so if I hide this bottom layer, as you can see, it is just the sky that has been selected on this new layer. So if I come to Adjustment and come to Black and White, I can deal with just this area here. So of the sky there's is the blue that I'm trying to affect. I mean the other colours probably there is no or very little green, yellow or red in this image. So I was having a very slight effect on the flag at the top of the the tower so if I bring that red down you probably can't see this but it has put a, a little black line in the flag on the tower so I will click merge come back to the layers I can bring back the bottom layer unhide it and now pick another section to work on. So the next biggest section on my image is this grass land here. So again, I'm still on the selection brush. And in this case of just selecting, now I'm going to select some of these buildings as well, but not the tower itself. going to be a rough selection. I mean on your particular images you may want to take a bit more time and maybe select it with a lasso tool maybe. But I'm just doing this for speed. Right, so I've got pretty much what I want to get there. I'll just again refine it slightly. Again, about a three pixel mark. Click apply, press Ctrl and J to put that selection on a new layer. Ctrl and D to get rid of the selection. I can then hide that area and then add the black and white adjustment again. And now 
it's mainly the yellows and reds that I want to keep here so I'll keep the yellow up roughly where it is so I can get the whites on these flowers and I'm going to drop the red down and I can bring the yellow up a bit more there's not much believe it or not there's not much green in there or blues or reds I don't think no, no, well, the red and the yellow are the main two colours in this section. So it is, I mean, it is still a balancing act, but you are only dealing with a, one particular area. So it should make the job easier. So I will merge that into there come back to the layers highlight and unhide the bottom layer and now come to the next section I want to highlight and you don't necessarily have to worry too much about going over onto the black area because that will end up being underneath layer wise the um, black and white areas I've already done so I think that gets everything but the tower just have a quick double check yes I think so so I'm going to press Control and J then Control and D oh I forgot to refine it let me go back to Control and Z, Control and Z. Refine it. Just feather it a little bit again around the two or three pixel mark. Apply it then Control and J, Control and D. And then just come back to the black and white. So again, so now we are just having an effect on this area which I think is mainly again a bit of the yellow and the reds don't think there's much in the way of oh there's some there's a somebody up here that where the blue is having a slight effect on their trousers either goes dark or white i'll move it that way to keep it whiter yeah so the mainly this area is yellows or greens if you go too far you know, obviously you can then see the very definite join between the different layers but if I bring it down just make it a bit subtler it's a bit like that and see now that that grass area up there is still of a similar color because whereas before it was a very sort of bright whiter area so yeah I'm happy with that so I will merge that into that particular layer come back to the background and so now the only thing left is the tower so I can s select that just make sure I've got everything now press control no, refine first although I probably won't need refining because a lot of it is behind the black and white anyway so I'm not going to bother refining it I'm going to press Control and J to make a new layer Control and D to get rid of the selection mark area and then add an adjustment black and white and if this should just be reds and yellows I think but where's the grass I brought the 
I sort of darkened it. I do want to sort of make this tower a bit. Yeah, it's only really yellow, yeah, red and yellow that's affecting this. I wanted to make the tower a bit brighter than it was. Yeah, I like that. So I'll click merge. So this is the black and white version where I've divided it into sections and made each section a different black and white. And this top one is what it looked like when I tried to do a global adjustment doing the whole picture where you have to sacrifice like the darkness of the tower just to try and get the foreground to my liking so I hope you agree that I think for me that that is a better black and white image than that so you can try this on your own images it's not a perfect way of doing it and the better you select and refine and blend in the certain areas the better the end result will be but I personally think that's a slightly better way of trying to get a black and white image from a single image rather than maybe HDR images and making them black and white so I hope you enjoyed watching that hope you've learned something and thank you for watching and goodbye